Hello there, Alaskans, wherever you are. Welcome to the Must Read Alaska Show. Coming to you from somewhere in Alaska. This is the place where we talk about, you guessed it, Alaska. Where we keep the mainstream media on their toes and where we are standing up for what's right and a world run by leftists. You can find out more by heading over to mustreadalaska.com and also checking out the Must Read Alaska YouTube channel for some really great content. But first, let's get this party started. Hey, thank you, Scott. Hello, everybody. Welcome aboard the Must Read Alaska show coming to you from somewhere in Alaska. And it's a beautiful summer day. We're a place for conservative news and content at mustreadalaska.com. And we're standing up for a strong America, a free Alaska, and we're fighting for your freedom and your constitutional rights every single day. You can find Must Read Alaska at our website at mustreadalaska.com and also on social media. We have a, we have almost 19,000 followers now on um uh, Facebook. We're so thrilled about that. We're on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, MeWe, and a whole bunch of others, including the new one called Getter. I am Suzanne Downing, and you can also find my column at uh, Must Read America at our news partner, Newsmax, and I'm writing there every couple of weeks. I've got a new one up this week about uh, Americans' absolute disinterest in all things Olympics this year, and we're going to talk about that a little bit with my co-host, John Quick. Hey, John, what's going on in Nikiski? Well, welcome uh, to Nikiski. This is John Quick here. And, uh, you know, the big scuttlebutt here in Nikiski is we have a school board, Kenai Peninsula School Board meeting coming up. And the hot topic, as uh, folks in Alaska have seen, are will masks be mandatory for kids this year in school? And <clears throat> I'm hopeful that they will not be mandatory for kids this year in school here on the Kenai Peninsula borough and really all over Alaska. And the, uh, the superintendent, we have a new superintendent, his name is Clayton, and their current policy right now is great. It's, you can wear a mask if you want to. If you don't want to wear a mask, you don't have to. And they're not going to ask kids if they have the vaccination or not. And I think that is a great policy. But what's happening now, I just spoke to a school board member, is that the school board and the superintendent's office is being inundated with almost cut and paste literature from uh, the uh, teachers union uh, requesting parents to write in and say that masks have to be mandatory and that they're required to keep kids in the most safest environment ever. And so they're getting inundated with these letters and these emails and these phone calls that are, you know, pretty much written off of a script. And uh, they need parents who are not in favor of mandatory masks to write in. And I would say that's true all throughout Alaska. If you have kids in school, if you have friends that have kids in school and you do not want to have masks be mandatory, you have to write to the school board. You have to call the superintendent. You have to call your school board member that represents you, or you could face uh, what happened last year. And that's kids having to wear a mask at recess, in sports, in places that don't make sense. I mean, I don't know, you know, my kids are uh, elementary school age and one is junior high age and uh, they don't really wear a mask but I've seen their friends wear a mask they take them off and they spit on them and sneeze on them and put them in their pockets and they wear the same mask all day long it seems a whole, whole like whole heck of a lot worse for you to be wearing that bacteria infested thing all day than it would be just to breathe uh, you know God's air and use your lungs as the uh, filtration system because you know God kind of knew what he was doing when he built us so well, Dr. Quick, well, thank you for that. <laughs> hey, you know, it's the same thing over here in, in Anchorage. The school board and the superintendent have, have been inundated with letters from parents and teachers, and many of them are cookie cutter letters. So they, there is an, a campaign going on, and, and people that I've talked to say it is the Anchorage Education Association, which is an arm of the NEA, the National Education Association, it's the teachers union and they want the kids in masks. Now, why would a teacher want a child in a mask? Because they're easier to control. Um, it's just, uh, they, they become more compliant. Once they're in a mask, they just simply will sit in their seat and behave better. They don't have as much personality. And the other thing about that is, is that uh, some of the parents are saying the kids and the, and the teachers are saying, the kids don't mind the masks. In fact, the kids like the masks. 
okay, well, all of your little introvert kids might like that mask because it might, you know, help them cope with just the social aspects of school that are difficult for them. But, you know, what are you going to do? Go through the rest of your life in a mask. We got to teach our kids not to hide behind masks. And what they're doing is they're so normalizing it. But that, that is, um, that is a, a factor for all the schools in the state. Kodiak is making that decision this week. Juno, I believe, has already made the decision to put the younger kids in masks. And now Anchorage is also looking at that, which is, shall we put the younger kids in masks, but the, the kids are old enough for vaccinations, they can go without masks. But of course, we can't ask them if they were vaccinated because that would be a bridge too far. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I think, uh, <clears throat> parents, this is your time to rise up because oftentimes conservative parents, we don't necessarily get involved until after the fact we show up and we're like, well, crap, our kids are having to wear masks and being, you know, forced to wear masks in school and forced to wear masks in sports and forced to wear a mask at recess. We should do something about this. Well, now you can do something about this on the front end, which is now. So you don't have to be having the same argument and debate for the next nine months. Right. Um, it's going to take your effort. It will, right. you will have masks in every school in Alaska unless parents get their crap together and start emailing, phone calling, and and uh, sending letters into their school yep. board and superintendents. Yep, rise up, parents. Hey, listen, um, I was uh, I want to talk a little bit about the column that I, I sent to, over to Newsmax for, I, I don't know, they'll put it up probably tomorrow, about the Olympics, because, of course, the weekend is behind us, and everybody I talked to wasn't watching the Olympics. It was really interesting. I talked to parents at a, at a baseball game. I talked to somebody down south in uh, one of the lower lower 48 states. It was happened to be Louisiana. And I said, are you going out to dinner with people? What are they saying? Does anybody paying attention? And everybody was saying, I don't even care anymore. I hope the women's soccer team loses. I don't care about the athletes. I mean, I'm sorry that some of them are good, but personally, don't care. I've had quite enough of being lectured at by these athletes that aren't, you know, aren't necessarily brain surgeons, but they, they want to lecture us about things like immigration and economics and just the, the whole critical race mass theory. And, and um, I, I've got a lot of good feedback on that column. People are really commenting on it saying, yeah, I could care less about the Olympics this year. Yeah, I mean, I would agree with you. I think <laughs> I didn't even know. I honestly didn't really know there was Olympics going on this year because the average Joe could care less. And and um, we have these athletes now. Well, we've seen it in the NBA where um, they've become activists and the NFL where they've become activists. And data does not lie. You can look at the average, you know, the average rating of an NBA or an NFL team you know, five, six years ago, how many people were viewing Monday night football? How many people were viewing Thursday night football? How many people were viewing an average NFL game? And they've literally dropped 50% in viewership in these, you know, last couple of years because people don't want to sit there and get lectured on why you hate America. You, uh, especially if you're in the NBA or an NFL, you're getting paid millions of dollars to play a sport. Last time I checked, you're making more money than I am. You don't have any <laughs> gumption to yeah. complain about how you haven't made it in life and so this trickles into the olympics now where we see the soccer team especially where people are literally rooting for them to lose people in america are rooting for them to lose because they do not want this soccer team on the podium and taking a knee or taking a whatever it is right. to be disrespectful to the united states because in the olympics you know i think if you win a gold or a medal you get some sort of money but these are players who are basically representing their country and to honor their country and the people in their country and they're playing on behalf of their country and so if you are playing on behalf of your country and you get to the podium and you're like i'd rather live in communist cuba than this you know america sucks well go move there we could care less we don't need you in our country and stop complaining about the most free country in the world because we're the only country in the world where literally every communist country is trying to get into our country, people that live there, because they know that we have a free country. So if you're, uh, you know, complaining about how your soccer team has obligated you to live a lesser lifestyle because of your choices in life, and you 
are a professional athlete and you don't, oh, God forbid you win a gold medal and have to sit on a podium. Well, we don't want you on the podium. Get lost. We can care less <laughs> if you live here. Move to Cuba. Get on a freaking boat or a raft and use your arms because you can't use a paddle because you can't go by that because you're against capitalism. And go use your arms and raft to Cuba and stay there. Let me know how it goes for you. Yeah, that's, that's what you really think there, John. Um, yeah, but, you know, that is like the case is that that the women's soccer team is like, you know, what they've done, how they've behaved they don't even deserve to be on that podium for us. We don't want them there. It was interesting to see that the women's basketball team, although they have been misbehaving all year, all of a sudden they're sort of seeing what that America has turned on the teams. And we, and we have, I would say that probably 49% of Americans are just saying, whatever, we've had enough. And, um, and so the women's basketball team has decided that they're not going to, uh, to protest or demonstrate, and they're not gonna take a knee or raise a fist. They're just going to be polite and stand there and be respectful because they kind of see what's coming down the pike for them. And it, that will ultimately, it will cost these people sponsorships because they're going to make themselves so toxic that companies eventually are going to say, you know, that's just not what we ought to be representing. So, hey, we've well, got it's a all about the. It, <clears throat> oops, sorry. Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> I was just going to say the uh, the this is where conservatives are great is they'll turn off the TV. They won't spend yeah. their money. They, yep. You'll see, you, we just saw it happen with, this is a little bit of a weird analogy, but NBA Jam or the uh, um, Space Jam, the second one that just came out, LeBron James is starring in it. You know, Michael, yep. Michael Jordan starred in the first one and it was a huge success. They made $670 million. LeBron James, woke LeBron James, who's, you mm -hmm. know, society has done all the bad things to, he starred in the second one and nobody came out to see it. Why? because we don't need a activist preaching to us one side and then starring in some Hollywood movie wanting us to spend our money on them. It's just not going to happen. Hmm. Yeah. No, it's just all very true. Hey, we've got a couple of other topics um, that I want to touch on. One, I want to catch everybody up on what's going on with the Bradley House restaurant, which is in South Anchorage. And as, as listeners and readers of Must Read Alaska know, it is a, a great spot to go in the summer and sit on the deck. And they've got wonderful, they've got umbrellas, they've got a little waterfall, a beautiful lawn there. And people really just, it's, it's kind of bar food. It's a great place to go for hamburgers and chicken fingers and things like that. And um, Bernie Bradley just couldn't take the, the ins and outs of the uh, Anchorage Assembly anymore. She said, I've had it. You know, I'm, I'm open, I'm closed, I'm shut. I mean, just, you know, I, I put $100,000 of my own money into barriers. I went there the other day and they have this, um, to, to get in the, in the building, you just have to wave your hand in front of a motion sensor. So she installed a motion sensor so that nobody would be touching the front door. I mean, she spent a lot of money in that place. Well, she sold it. And uh, the buyer, interestingly enough, she sold the whole thing, the building, the land. And this is a historic restaurant. It used to be Oriental Gardens. Her family owned and ran for many, many years. And then it burned by fire. She rebuilt. And so the owner, um, she has a liquor, uh, Bernie has a liquor license and she's got to transfer it to the new owner. And it's Abraham Gallo, who is part of the Gallo's family when they own a bunch of property around here, including Gallo's restaurants. And so although the restaurant's closed today and normally she said she was just closing, that's it on the 25th, it will be reopened tomorrow under new ownership. And he's just going to keep running it for a while because he's got to keep that liquor license with the Bradley mm -hmm. house name and i don't know what the arrangements are but he's he's just going to run it for a while as bradley house nothing will change so we can all go down to bradley house and, and enjoy uh, time on the deck this summer and make sure when you go there you tip your waitress or your waiter very well because thank goodness they came to work a lot of people aren't going to work but really appreciate the the wait waitress we had there the other night how hard she was working she was working so many tables I just, um, man, she's just working her fingers to the bone. So treat your treat your weight staff gently and um, know that they're working overtime. And um, I want to talk about a couple of other things going on with the Anchorage Assembly besides them running people out of business. You know, we really thought we'd seen it all up here in Anchorage, John. I mean, we are living <laughs> in San Francisco of the North, but wait, there's so much more wokeness to be had on the Assembly. Last week, I was writing about Sammy Graham, who was appointed by the mayor 
to be the uh, the librarian for the municipality. So she'd run all the libraries. And it's a big management job, basically. She's not running a, a computer checking books out for people. She's in the back. She's running a team. You know, they've got dozens of people running these libraries. And uh, she's conservative. She did run for school board recently. She's got two master's degrees. One's in educational management. She was a principal of a school for a while where she managed a library. And the other's in counseling, which of course I think would come in great and handy for all the kind of people that show up at a library these days, could use a counselor. But the assembly, which is all gone Antifa on us, uh, just doesn't want her to be confirmed because she does not have a master's degree in library science. Not two master's degrees, but not one in library science. And so that confirmation is coming up next week. And um, I'm sure you saw that story. It's got a lot of attention. People realize that under the directorship of librarians who have library science degrees, our libraries have really deteriorated. They're not places in, in urban areas. Now, you're different where you are in McKiskey and Kenai. Your library is probably safe. But yeah. the Lusak Library, that's not a safe place to take your children. They will be exposed to all kinds of things there. Uh, junkies with needles passing out, people defecating in corners, people having sex in the stacks, and then books that are chosen specifically to recruit children into uh, gay lifestyles and, um, and, and, and placed in prominent areas where children are exposed to them and parents don't have a chance to say, you know, that's not for us. Um, they have drag queen story time. And it's just, it is not the kind of place you'd want to bring your kids. And this is all under the guidance of certified librarians who have gone to school to a something from, gotten a degree from a college that's certified by the American Library Association. You know, I actually think our libraries would be better off if they were run by, well, you know, maybe a, a rocket scientist or or maybe somebody who has a master's degree in English or something else. But I think these library science master's degrees right now, that's a degree in just wokeness, change, uh, changing society for the worst. Yeah, I, I think, uh, to be honest, I think this has nothing to do with a degree. I think it has to do with the fact that these woke people know that uh, somebody like Sammy is probably not going to have uh, drag queens read to third and fourth graders and oh, and, and, oh, and oh, preschool, and, preschool, yeah, second, preschool. third graders. Yeah, she's not going to go for that. She's not going to go for the inappropriate sexual books that are right in front of the kids section as soon as you go into these libraries. And it's in Kenai, too. So it's not just <clears throat> in Anchorage. Uh, you go to the Kenai Library. It's wildly inappropriate sexual books all over the place for kids to look at. And somebody like Sammy's is going to put the kids first and put education first and not going to put, put this extreme left agenda first and have uh, you know these uh, events that are so inappropriate for kids to take place. And not only that, we saw recently where they did one of these drag queen readings and the person's name was it was wildly inappropriate. I can't remember what it was, but I think it had yeah, something it was, to it do was with a, it. Was it was a very it was a very clear sexual pun, and we don't need to repeat it here. But it 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 was you know for adults maybe it was funny, but no, not you know, that's not who you have reading to your children. Somebody with a a name that the name means a sexual act. I'm sorry. It's yeah, just and not it's, the, you know if if you want to be. A, if somebody wants to be a drag queen and do have a little business and they do the dancing and the drag queen thing and they have adults pay to go see it, great. I could care less. Do it. Go go make a million bucks. Go do your thing. It's That's inappropriate right. to do this kinds of things in front of children. And not only that, but to do it at a, a, a place, a government uh, building because oh, uh, it's not taxpayer. a private entity. Taxpayers taxpayer dollars dollars. pay for mm -hmm. these drag queens to come and read to your kids. And again, if you wanna be a drag queen and you have a business and that's what you do for a living, awesome. I hope you become a, you know, the Bill Gates of drag queens, but uh, not in a publicly funded arena where it's wildly inappropriate to have those conversations in front of young, young children. Yeah, I guarantee all these woke people who think that uh, communism is so great. 
they aren't doing this in Cuba. I'm telling you, they are not letting drag queens read to kids in Cuba. Um, so another thing that the, the assembly is up to besides probably canceling, oh, by the way, you know, that here's the workaround for the mayor on that. I want, just want to mention this. The mayor, if they do not confirm Sammy Graham, I'm going to suggest to him that he appoints her as a deputy librarian, as a deputy librarian, and then go ahead and say she's as the deputy librarian, she will, she will serve as the acting librarian and then never appoint an acting and never appoint a librarian, just let her serve. And that way we could, um, we can have our, a person that we think is more appropriate and we can work around this uh, Antifa assembly. Another thing the Antifa assembly is doing, I wanted to mention is that they hired this, this equity officer for Anchorage. And this is the most insane thing you ever heard. I went back and looked at, at the ordinance that they created last August. And now this was in August when Berkowitz was still mayor. And I have heard that it was his wife, Mara Kimmel, who wanted this ordinance. She wanted a, an equity officer in the municipality. Now, mind you, there's already an equal opportunity officer and there's already a budsman and they've got all these other things, but they wanted this extra thing, which is an equity officer. Equity, everybody does not mean equality. It means what we do is we want equal outcomes for everybody as opposed to equal opportunity. And it's, um, it's just kind of a different thing, but they passed this last, August and then things got really squirrely for the uh, for the former mayor because he was caught with his pants down in the um, in the bathroom in the official mayor's private bathroom. Literally uh, with, with his pants down. <laughs> literally with his pants down. You know, it was not a good thing, not a good look on him. And so um, he quit. And then they they didn't hire this equity officer, and they kind of got going with it this fall. They they searched and searched, and then they found, of course, they couldn't find an Alaskan to do the job. They couldn't find a native Alaskan to do the job. They found an African-American guy from, or let's call him black, he's not from Africa, he's just black American guy from Tacoma. And uh, so he comes up and he starts in April. And I got a call the other day from a listener and a, a reader from the Must Read Alaska uh, blog. And she said, did they fire him now that, now that Bronson's the mayor? Is he fired? I said, well, I'll find out. Well, I go looking at the ordinance and he can't be fired without permission of the assembly. So here the assembly has authorized and has hired somebody and he can't be fired. He's going to make $115,000 a year for the next four years. That's his contract. And then he cannot be fired without the assembly agreeing and they won't agree. And so all this guy will make $460,000 or something over four years. And let me tell you, he is probably going to do nothing for four years is the biggest waste of taxpayer money that we've seen. I mean, that half, a, that half a million dollars that they're going to spend on him because, you know, plus he, he gets benefits and stuff that could have been used to plant flower beds and hire people to tend gardens around town or policing, community policing, other things that we need. But no, we are going to have a guy sitting like a lump on a log and he's not going to do anything for four years and we're going to pay him half a million dollars. But wait, well, there's, yeah, more. wait there's more. <laughs> there's more. So before we go, I have to tell you that on Tuesday, the Anchorage Assembly is planning to pass an ordinance to hire yet another person. And this one, you've got to read this story, folks, at mustreadalaska.com. This is a shadow mayor. So the, the Anchorage Assembly is going to hire somebody. They're, off, it's, they're the appropriating body, so they get to decide. They're going to hire somebody who answers to them. And in the ordinance, this person has access to all municipal documents, all municipal property, all plans. I mean, they could walk right into the mayor's conference room during a meeting that the mayor's having with the senior staff, and they could say, by ordinance, I'm authorized to be in here listening to you planning. And they can go directly to any employee, have all access to all employees in the executive branch. Now, this is like if the legislature hired a staff person and in the statute said, this staff person has access to all deliberative planning documents, everything in the executive branch can call any member of the uh, governor's staff all the way on down to any low level person, does not have to clear it through the executive branch, 
can say, I would like to have your draft copy of the budget you're working on and is authorized to get even a draft copy, is authorized to actually walk into offices and they could rifle through desks because they, in the ordinance, it says they have access, free unfettered access to all municipal properties. Let me tell you, John, they could even walk into the evidence room down their police station and ask to go and just not ask, say they, that they have access by authorization by this ordinance, they can look through the evidence lockers. It's the most outrageous thing they've done yet. This, this group on the assembly is literally lost its mind. Yeah, this is a, uh, it's a, basically like a mole position. It <laughs> is a mole position. And the, uh, the things I'd be interested to see, because at the Kenai Peninsula Borough, we have, uh, uh, they share an employee in the uh, the the attorney for the borough is also the attorney for the assembly. Same and so o- oftentimes we found ourselves in a conundrum of, okay, is there a conflict with this conversation? Is there a conflict with that conversation? And yeah. with this, this person uh, uh, that the Anchorage assembly is suggesting, it has ultimate authority, basically. And almost as much authority as the mayor would have with any sort of staff or personnel. And that is a scary thing because if you just think about how the assemblies acted in the last year or two, um, much like a five-year-old would act not getting their way in a candy shop, they're going to turn loose somebody and they're going to try to find dirt on that person. They're going to try to find dirt on this person. They're going to try to find dirt on this person. It's going to, that's all it's going to be is one big witch hunt. And and it's going to be disastrous, I think. So that's exactly right. In fact, when you say you have access to all municipal property, that also means everybody's emails. But I'm on the staff for the assembly, and I ha- I am entitled to go through all your emails. And so, you know, there's a lot of deliberative stuff that goes on in the executive branch that is just a discussion until it's final. And this gives them a, a mole to bring back to the assembly. Well, this is what the information, this is what the mayor is planning. So we need to get ahead of him. So we need to do an ordinance that blocks him from doing that. And it's very clear that that's what they're doing. They're looking for somebody to help them get information before the mayor does something so that they can block him. So go to Muster, Alaska and and read that story, everybody, about the assembly hiring a shadow mayor. This is a shadow mayor just to bypass Bronson. They didn't get the mayor they wanted. You know, Dunbar didn't get elected. So now they're going to to put their own person in place. Yeah, and uh, the scary thing about something like this is this person, this potential new employee, they could go directly to the IT director and say, I wanna see all the mayor's emails, executive privilege or not. And and the the IT director would have to basically, without even the mayor even knowing, they wouldn't have to go through a public information request or anything. They could just hand over all the emails. Yep, and it's, it's it's property you know even it's if it's a little deliberate. little scary <laughs> oh yeah it is well listen everybody it's, uh the, that that half hour went by so fast john and and we have other things to talk about but there's always wednesday on the must read alaska show and scott levesque will keep that handled for us and there'll be lots and lots and lots of stuff for him to talk about on wednesday there's so much good stuff up at mustreadalaska.com. Thank you for reading. Thank you for listening to our show. Please um, be sure to give us a, a rating. Uh, you know, there's a chance to put in a comment and a review. If you like this show, we would love to hear from you. It'd be really great. Your support allows us to stay strong, independent, and thoughtful. And we are going to continue to keep the mainstream media on its toes and hold their feet to the fire so that they uh, don't control the narrative here in Alaska. Until next week, John, we're signing off from somewhere in Alaska.